Hello and good morning. I'm Dr. Darren Oatley Radcliffe and this talk is titled A Circular Economy Centred on Microalgae, Moving Towards Economic Commercial Scale Recycling of Industrial, Agricultural and Domestic Waste for a Sustainable Environment. Now on this slide I've said what are algae, but in this environment I think it's pretty fair to say we we all know what algae are and what they can do. So I'll just stress the fact that they're the fastest photosynthetic organism on the planet and that they consume 1.8 kilos of CO2 for every kilogram of biomass, which means essentially they can help mitigate greenhouse gas emissions. Similarly, at the bottom of this slide, you can see a range of different products that are available from algae or from algae derived materials. So in essence, algae offer us a vast array of products. We just need to be able to get in there and harvest them. So this slide represents photosynthesis. And if you're going to grow algae, you need three main items. These are energy, typically in the form of sunlight. You need a carbon source, I've shown here CO2. And you need a nitrogen and a phosphorus source. Here I've shown nitrates and phosphates. Now the bit that I want to sort of suggest here is that we can obtain CO2, the nitrates and the phosphates, all from man-made waste products. So the idea of this talk is to take those waste materials and turn them into useful products. So this slide exemplifies that philosophy and I'm showing here how algae can be used to form a true circular economy. So you've got human activities at the top, whether they be domestic, industrial, agricultural, feeding waste into an algal production process, which then if we've got a sufficient downstream process, we can then harvest uh, products from those algae that we can use in our everyday activities, which will then generate waste. And therefore, you can see how the cycle uh, can develop. So this slide's quite a busy slide, but essentially it shows nutrient recovery, i.e. harvesting nitrates and phosphates from waste materials. So the top left of this slide, if you look at that image, you can see an anaerobic digester. Waste is fed into that anaerobic digester and the products from it is a biogas, which we can use as a fuel, but the digestate itself that comes out of that is rich in nitrates and phosphates. You just have to do a little bit of processing to release them, and then a membrane process will quite nicely harvest them. So on the right-hand side of the picture, you can see two processes, uh, the anaerobic digestion system for a dairy farm and the bottom one there for an aquaculture system. And you can see that when we do our uh, recovery process, you can recover around 700 milligrams of nitrogen and 100 milligrams of phosphorus per liter. Uh, from the dairy farm and for the aquaculture you get 50 milligrams of nitrogen and uh, 500 milligrams of phosphorus respectively. Now in order to grow algae you need to tune that N to P ratio and algae depending on the species require a specific N to P ratio. So the bottom left of this image shows how you can tailor those N to P ratios using a process called diafiltration with a nanofiltration membrane. This is quite a complicated process as, as you're looking at it on the screen, but a much more simplistic version of this is also available. So this slide shows how you can recycle CO2 from an off gas. So on the left hand side here, you can see uh, a red item. Uh, that's the back of a, an industrial um, wood chip burner. And in the circle there in green, uh, I've highlighted the offtake system. So you can see that zoomed up in the, in the next image. And that's simply a gas outlet, which we then pump through to our bioreactor. And on the right hand side, you can see typical growth curves from growing algae on waste CO2 from a flue stack. This process works really well, but you have to pre-filter the gases before you feed them into uh, the bioreactor because the off gas from uh, the wood chip burner is, contains quite a lot of particulate materials. Again, this is quite a busy slide, but this is a very important concept here. We're demonstrating what we classify as a biorefinery. So essentially this process, if we look at the box diagram in the middle, the PBR out, that's the outlet from our photobioreactor. So the first thing we would do in the downstream process is get rid of lots of the water because algae grow pretty dilute. In our systems, we tend to get somewhere around about two to three gram per liter of our algae. We're using closed photobioreactors, and I'll show you some pictures of those in a second. If you're going to harvest the internal materials from the algae, clearly you need to break the cells open and cell disruption is a whole talk on its own, but I've just represented that here as, as, as a text. The downstream process, we base our technologies around membranes. So we use a microfilter, which helps us uh, harvest the fats and the carbs. 
and then an ultrafiltration or series of ultrafiltrations which allow us to harvest the proteins and the pigments uh, from inside the algae. Now at the bottom of the screen there in the big picture you can see uh, discs entitled A through to D and then a pot at the end E. These represent essentially freeze-dried products from the algae. So A is the algae itself and then B, C and D are the internal components of the algae. This is a, a protein-rich extract, a carb-rich extract and a lipid fraction. The pot at the end shows uh, an oil-rich extract from that system which is the lipids which can be transesterified to fuels. Finally, on the right-hand side, if you go to more high resolution or a bit more effort, you can then harvest the pigments out of the algae. Now, you might say, why go to this effort of fractionating the algae? And the true fact of the matter is cost. You can get a lot more value out of high-resolution products than you can from bulk products. So a bulk product will typically give you something like a dollar per kilo, whereas the pigments that I'm showing here, these can be several thousand pounds per gram. So in order to maximize uh, your profits from a biorefinery, this level of separation is important. Now, everything I've shown to this point, we've run and demonstrated in our university laboratory facilities at around about 400 to 1,000 litres in scale, and in some cases, about 2,500 litres in scale. What this slide is showing you is the first industrial deployment of our technology, where we've gone up to 7,500 litres uh, maximum scale, but typically we run this system at about 5,000 litres. What you're looking at in the pictures is a picture of our photobioreactor on the left, showing it just after after inoculation and on the right showing it uh, down the growth curve of the algae so you can see it gets very very dense in these systems and we typically get something of the order of two gram per liter out of the system in the top right hand side there you can see a membrane filtration system that's used to harvest nitrates from digestate wastes so this plant has been deployed just outside of Plymouth in the United Kingdom and is deployed to an industrial facility where there's an anaerobic digestion system going on from a local farm on this slide you're seeing a current uh, system being built so we're scaling up once more beyond seven and a half thousand liters up to fifteen thousand liters in this particular case what you can see on the left hand side uh, picture is essentially two 40 foot containers and sandwiched between them is a polytunnel where our photobioreactors will live this facility offers more than the previous one in a sense of here we'll be recycling co2 from a flue gas but also we'll be doing all the algae husbandry in container number one and in container number two we'll be doing all the downstream process so the overall process that i've just described will be demonstrated in this facility now i was hoping as part of this talk to give you some results from this facility and show you the capex and opex and show you that this biorefinery approach using waste materials as the feed is cost effective unfortunately covid has delayed this project by six months so i'll come and give you that talk next year so to conclude this talk, hopefully I've shown you that the production of algae on waste nutrients is possible. We've demonstrated this at laboratory scale, and as you can see from some of the work that we've done, we've demonstrated different parts of it uh, industrially. CO2 clearly can be uh, mitigated from flue gas emissions, and nitrates and phosphates can be recovered and used as a feedstock for growing algae. Now this is quite impactful. Um, from an ecological point of view because this reduces nitrogen uh, being deployed to the land and in Europe this is a big problem as we have nitrogen vulnerable zones essentially where nitrogen is saturated in, in the land and just simply runs into the river causing pollution and last of all a biorefinery approach can generate a 100 percent mass efficient process where we use everything that comes out and that's uh, sustainable in, in terms of a production system Obviously, I didn't do all this work on my own, so I'd like to thank, firstly, my team. So you can see the names of my guys and girls there. Also, I'd like to thank the algal research team at uh, Swansea University, who I work in close partnership with, and the current projects that I'm on at the moment for giving us some funding. So RICE, that's the deployment that's in action at the moment. If you'd like to know more about that project, it's all related to reducing industrial carbon emissions come to the website that you could see there and also the deployment at Plymouth that I showed you that's essentially recycling anaerobic digestion waste that's the the second project there at the bottom go to that website if you'd like to know some more information 
Finally, I'd like to thank you guys for listening. Uh, my name's Dr. Darren Oatley Radcliffe. My contact details are there. And at the bottom of this image, you can see two companies that I formed. Membranology essentially sells separation equipment and process design for the algal industries. And Apex Water Solutions is an oil water separation company. So thank you very much for listening. And if you'd like to know any more information about anything you've seen, please do feel free to contact me.